What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with another CryptoRhythm lesson. Today, we are going to be talking about solving CryptoRhythms when you have to subtract. So let's take a look at our objective today. Today, we will learn how to solve subtraction CryptoRhythm puzzles by using problem solving strategies so that we stop breaking pencils in frustration. All right, if you did our addition lesson with us, these are going to be the exact same steps. And you already know them, but it's always good to name the steps. Step number one, we're going to look at the operation. Okay, today it's going to be subtraction, but that's going to lead us to step number two, because we want to look at the place values and see if we can make a quick generalization. Can we eliminate possible answer choices based on regrouping or properties of the operation? So today we're going to be looking at regrouping with subtraction and properties of subtraction. Step number three, after you eliminate some of the answer choices for each letter, we want to make an organized list for each letter with the remaining digits that it can be. Step number four, we're going to plug in an option to see if it works, right? We might have to guess and check. And if it doesn't work, we're going to cross it off our list and we're going to keep trying. And then step number five, figure it out, right? We got to figure it out. So these are kind of wordy, but when you look at how we do them step by step, if you follow this thought process, you'll be able to solve any type of crypto rhythm thrown your way. All right, practice number one. So I'm gonna look at the operation. I see that I'm subtracting. That helps me know about regrouping. So looking at it, knowing it's subtraction, I can look at the place values and I can make a quick generalization. I see my menu end, I had a digit in the hundreds place. And then after I subtracted, it was no longer here. That means that I had to have regrouped and given something to the tens place, which tells me one thing. I know already that A has to be one, right? I know it's one because if I regroup from it and it's nothing left, one is my only option. If this was a two and I regrouped, I would still have a one in the hundreds place. If it was a nine and I regrouped, I would still have an eight. So the only number that when you regroup from it, you're left with zero would be one. That tells me what A is already. Now I'm going to look at my place values. I'm going to look right here at my ones place. And even if I didn't know what A is, which I do, I know it's one. I know that any number minus itself has to be zero. So that means B has to be zero. Okay. Even if I didn't know A was one, this is still a generalization about place values. If it was six minus six, B would be zero. So I already know that A is one and B is zero. And I haven't even had to make an organized list yet. Just because I looked at the operation, I thought about the regrouping, and I made some quick generalizations about the numbers. Now, there's only one other letter left, so the best thing to do would be to plug in my numbers. 1, 0, 1. I know B is 0, I know A is 1, so this has to be 101. Minus a number I don't know, I know A has to be 1, and this has to be 1 and 0. So the difference was 10. Okay, so I didn't even make an organized list for here because I didn't need to. I'm just going straight to plugging in my options and see what works. I know one minus one is zero. I know zero minus nothing in the world, okay, because we're not doing negative numbers, is going to give me one, which means I had to have regrouped, which I already knew because I had already made that generalization about the hundreds place. So this became a zero and then go on the floor, go next door and get 10 more, right? 10 tens more. So now I'm thinking, okay, 10 minus what is going to give me one? And there's only one option, right? It has to be nine. So I know that C has to be nine for this equation. So I just took something completely abstract and some people, something a lot of people find confusing. And just by following a thought process, I quickly figured out what A and B had to be and then use those two digits to help me find C. So for this cryptorhythm, C equals nine, a equals one and B had to equal zero. Let's take a look at practice number two. All right, here's another example of a subtraction crypto rhythm puzzle. If you are ready to try this one by yourself, go ahead and push pause, try it out, follow our thought process. And if not, it's okay, you can do another one with me. So I'm gonna go ahead, I see A, B, C, and D. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna write A equals, B equals, C equals, and D equals, okay? And we know that I'm trying to find a digit. So my only digits that I, a, B, C, and D could be our 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. But I don't want to make that organized list yet. I want to look at the operation, which is subtraction. And I want to look at my place values and see, okay, is there any generalizations that I can make looking at this? All right. Well, I already know right here that I had to have regrouped because if I didn't regroup, B minus 0 would have been B. 
So I know that when I regrouped here, I was left with a D. So this is a kind of a higher level thinking process, but I know that B minus one is going to equal D, okay? And this might not help me, but it's still a generalization I wanna think about. When I regrouped and gave 10 more over here, right? Get my regrouping. It left me with a D because D minus zero would be D. So just thinking about that might help me later down the road. I also know another thing right off the bat, just a generalization. I know that because I had to regroup here, that means D had to be bigger than A. So whatever D is, it has to be a larger digit than A. So I'm gonna put over here, just kind of on the side, D is greater than A. Again, I knew that because when I, ha I had to come over to the B and regroup, which turned it into the D down here. All right, now, some of you may have come up with other generalizations. Uh, I don't see anything else that I could do. So I've already looked at the operation. I've looked at the place values. I made some generalizations and I have eliminated some possibilities. Okay, not, not a lot, not as many as we did the first one, but now I need to make my organized list. Okay, so I'm gonna start with D and I know that D zero is still in play. So it could be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. I know it can't be nine. The reason I know it can't be nine is because if B was nine, nine minus one would equal D, okay? Now I don't know if B is nine or not, but biggest possible digit would be nine. That means D can only be eight. So I've eliminated that digit for D. Now for B, I know that I had to regroup from it, so it can't be zero. And I know it can't be one because when I regrouped, it didn't become a zero. So the smallest possible number it could be would be two. So B could be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, okay? I haven't eliminated any answer cho choices for B or for A. So A, all of the digits are in play for A. Play for A. That's a nice, you should check out our uh, Instructor Beats wraps. They're very good. And also C, I cannot eliminate anything for C as well. Uh, so I'm just gonna make my organized list from this point. Now, this is where that perseverance comes in, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to, we made an organized list, we're gonna plug in an option, okay? And we're gonna see if it works. And if it doesn't, we're gonna cross it off. I'm gonna start with going with D because D was the one that I saw the most. So I need to minimize this. And I'm gonna begin the process of guessing and checking. Now, I also forgot D cannot be zero. And the reason D can't be zero is because if B can only be two, we know two minus one would be one, okay? So the smallest possible answer choice it could be would be one. So if I go ahead and plug in one for each D that I see, okay, one, I don't know what that is, okay? That'd be C still. And I'm gonna start with my ones place. Okay, what could C be where if I subtract one from it, I get one? All right, well, the only thing that C could be would be two. So if C equals two, that means this two would also have to be that. Now, if D is one, that would have to make B two, right? Because we talked about it. So B cannot be two because C would have been two, okay? Let's now plug in two for D and C. So if I'm plug in two for D, each D would be two. So I'm gonna be subtracting 22 and I'm gonna get a number here. And I don't know what C is, I'm gonna get a number here. And if uh, if D is two, I know B would have to be three, okay? Right, we've talked about that up there. B minus one is D. I knew that because I had to regroup. So now my question is, okay, what minus two would be two? And that would make C four. So if I make C four, then this means this one also has to be four right here. And now I'm thinking to myself, okay, what minus two would get me four? Okay, well, this would have to be a six right here, okay? And that doesn't make any sense because then I wouldn't have had to have regrouped. So I wouldn't have had to regroup here and that wouldn't make any sense. So I know that D cannot be two, right? Which means B cannot be three and C cannot be four. And I forgot to cross out two from earlier. Again, this is where that perseverance is coming into play and we have to continue to try different things. Now, I'm not really that close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip to the other side and I'm gonna start with my largest option for D and then work my way backwards. Okay, I've already tried the first couple options. They didn't work, so let me flip to my largest option. So if I subtract, if I make D eight, that means I'm gonna be subtracting 88, all right? 
which means my answer right here would have to be an eight and that would have to be an eight perfect and b then would have to be a nine right because i know b minus one was d now i don't know what c is and i don't know what a is all right let's see if this can work what number minus eight equals eight and the only number i can think of would be 16 okay because 16 minus 8 equals 8 which means c would have to be a 6 and if c was a 6 that means i had to have regrouped right here right so whatever this a is i had to regroup to make this a 16 and if this c is a 6 this c would also have to be a 6 perfect so now i know my difference is 868 okay well I know that C would have to be 6 because when I regrouped from it, it was 16. All right, so let me see if A works. Okay, well, what number minus 8 equals 6? All right, and that number has to be 14, which means A has to be a 5. Because if A was a 5 and then I regrouped from it to make that 6 a 16, it would become a 4. Okay, and then the 4 minus 8, can't do that. More on the floor, go next door, get 10 more. And then I had to regroup here to make this an 8. And so then my 4 became a 14, and then I subtracted. So actually, just kind of by the luck of the draw, the fourth one I did worked. 8 has to be D, which would make C 6, which would make B 9, which would have made A 5. <laughs> Okay, so again, I use my place value generalization and actually this part right here that I noticed at the beginning was really, really important because that allowed me when I guessed what D is to also know what B would have to be, okay? This relationship. So nothing you notice is too small to use to help you, all right? Now, if I would have kept going on three, it would have been the very last digit possible. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you have to guess and check and plug in and use that problem solving strategy and then cross it off your organized list as you go. All right, so use the steps. You saw for practice number one how quick it went because we used our steps. Practice number two was a little bit slower, but I promise you having a plan and sticking to it is going to save you a lot of frustration. And eventually, just like we did, you'll get to the answer. Thank you so much for checking us out. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options online. We'd love to have you subscribe, like the video, comment, let us know where you're watching from. Check out all our other songs and lessons. We appreciate you. Thank you again. Instruct Beats. Out.